Hi students, welcome to Year 12 Biology, and this is module number five on heredity. We're going to continue our look at reproduction in different groups of organisms by looking at reproduction in fungi. In this particular video, we continue with our uh, look at, I guess, uh, the range of different organisms that are listed as part of the groups we need to look at in the context of explaining the mechanisms of reproduction, which ensure continuity of the species. We need to analyze a range of sexual and asexual methods of reproduction in a variety of organisms. And in this video, we're going to focus on two ways in which fungi reproduce, budding and spores. So again, make sure you get a target for where you're trying to um, uh, pinpoint your level of understanding of each of these things. There are a couple of different types of methods of fungal reproduction that you can look at, and fungi can also reproduce sexually, although that's not one of the options that we're specifically um, asked to focus on. But you can definitely look at that as a, as a way to extend. You should be able to describe then those two important processes, uh, reproduction by spores or by buds, or by budding, and then to see if you can come up with some of the reasons why one particular strategy may be more beneficial than another. So this is the fungal group. There are a number of different um, types of fungi from the single-celled yeast that we use for fermentation um, to probably the uh, organism that we most readily think of when we think fungi, which are mushrooms or toadstools. Fungi can reproduce both sexually and asexually, and this, of course, is one of the important things that uh, we need to, uh, I guess, acknowledge along the way. They, however, because the predominant method of reproduction for fungi is asexual, they do spend most of their life as haploid cells, and we will, in this particular video, focus on uh, the methods of budding and spore formation. Uh, when cells do reproduce via sexual reproduction, we do have two different cells coming together, and that's when you ha would have diploid cells, and that is something that, as I said, can happen in fungi and something we might look at very briefly at the end of this video. So if it's about advantages, one of the most important things about asexual reproduction is we're looking at fast rate and also lower energy. Obviously, if you don't have to try and get two different types of cells together, particularly two different types of cells from two different individuals together, that saves you some time and it also saves you some energy. Eggs in particular are a very high energy cell. It takes a lot of energy for the organism to produce eggs, which is why most um, female organisms don't produce a huge number, certainly not compared with the number of sperm produced by males. Uh, but it is, it is a very important process in terms of how fast reproduction happens. Asexual reproduction, because of the fact that um, it is about cells dividing or about um, smaller individuals being budded off from the main individual, these things can happen much quicker. And it means that there is a, uh, this is an important strategy for colonization. But it's also a strategy that works best in stable environments. So keep that in mind as we talk about the fact that's, that many um, fungal species reproduce by spores. And you may have seen these. In fact, sometimes they're uh, something that happens that, that irritates people who have allergies. Spores are very, very tiny particles. They are often produced by mushroom-like fungi. Um, the cup, the fruiting cup, which is kind of that, that classic um, shape of a mushroom, uh, is where the spores are located. Some of those uh, fruiting cups actually explode and release um, millions of spores uh, into the air. And they're often transported either by the wind, the air, uh, by water. Sometimes they can fall in the water or also they can be carried by other organisms. They're so light, they're so fine that they can be easily transported from one place to another. And of course, this is important again for colonization and rapid uh, increase in population size. The fact that they don't need to find uh, a partner or uh, a mate makes it much uh, makes the whole process much more efficient. And as we say, it's it's it has its advantages in stable environments where the organisms want to reproduce quickly. And you can often see that um, this this particular method is usually. Um, but not always associated with some level of moisture. 
we know if it's been raining, we can often see uh, fungi popping up, a little mushroom. Sometimes you might even see them popping up in your lawns uh, as uh, they quickly take advantage of conditions that are ideal for them to do this. But of course, keeping moulds um, away from um, moist environments can also be a bit of a problem. And if you leave um, bread or um, uh, fruits like uh, oranges or mandarins out, you can see the little blue moulds that start to grow on them as well. So spores are uh, one very important method that fungi use for reproduction. But the other asexual method that they use is budding. One of the important things when you're looking at budding and trying to distinguish it from binary fission, which is another strategy that we will look at, is to look at the size. One of the things that's, that's common in the mitotic divisions that we talk about for binary fission is that the um, cytoplasm splits in the process of cytokinesis and you get two new cells, but those two new cells tend to be identical in size. Uh, the information in, in terms of their genetic information is identical, it's been copied, and the cell kind of splits down the middle. Budding is different. So in these yeast cells, so this is an example of a fungus that will reproduce asexually via budding. Um, yeast cells reproduce, you can grow yeast cultures, and often you can see the cells in the stages of budding. It's probably the simplest um, observation that you can make. Um, and you see that the cells that are kind of uh, splitting apart are not all equal in size. And that's probably our biggest indicator that here we have budding occurring and not binary fission. So the little buds will um, pinch off from the parent. So you can see one as, a, as I've drawn, pretty much scribbled all over it now, so it's hard to see. But you can see a number of examples here where um, one individual is kind of breaking away from the parent cell. So again, just as we talked about for spores, this is about rapid rate of population growth. And that's really our major advantage. Of course, if environments are changing, variation is, is more important to take advantage of that. And that's when sexual reproduction is going to be more important. Fungi can reproduce sexually. They... Um, they can occasionally, you will find um, the hyphae. Now hyphae are, are like, um, I don't want to call them roots because they're not plants, but they kind of have like little hairs that grow um, that you can sometimes see. They're the ones that you often find um, giving you an indication that you have something that's been affected by fungal growth. Sometimes the spores sit on the ends of the hyphae, so we can... Um, have a reproduction directly from the spore, but those spores can also have, um, if you like, two hyphae uh, with spores on each on the ends of each coming together and actually forming a diploid cell. What we have here is a zygote spore. You may be familiar with the term zygote, which is a term we use to describe a fertilized egg with the male and the female um, reproductive cells come together. So a zygote spore is basically the same um, idea, but this time happening in a fungus. So whilst it's not specifically noted that you have to describe um, sexual reproduction in fungi, sexual reproduction, of course, the main uh, advantage of that is variation. And that means that the individuals or the population are able to adjust to any changes because some individuals will be better suited than others. And that additional variation increases um, the opportunity for the population to be acted upon by natural selection. So this is a very quick overview. It's important you get some examples of each different type of fungi that's, that's carrying out these processes and make sure that you can just throw one or two of these uh, additional examples in like sexual reproduction in fungi uh, as you go along. We'll continue to have a look at a couple more groups, bacteria and the protists in future videos. Thanks for watching.